Did you know that tasting wine can actually improve your brain? It's true. Unless you're a chef or sommelier, chances are you've been living life with an underdeveloped sense of smell and taste, two of the most undervalued observational skills we have. But here's the good news. No matter your age, you can still train these senses and boost a critical part of your brain in the process. There's a region in your brain called the entorhinal cortex, which plays a key role in memory and navigation. It's like your brain's filing cabinet for sensory experiences, and it's also one of the first areas affected by memory disease. A study with master sommeliers who trained their senses through wine tasting had higher volumes of gray matter in this part of their brain. So in a way, learning to identify wine's aromas is kind of like agility training for your mind. If wine just smells like wine to you right now, don't worry. You've got nowhere but up to go. I'm Madeline Paquette, and this is Wine Folly. Today we're diving into the fascinating world of wine aromas. Why wine can smell like strawberries, even though it's made with grapes. How to pick up on those individual scents. And then if you'd like to try your go at blind tasting, there's something called impact compounds that you need to know about. Finally, at the end, I have a surprise for you and we'll put your skills to the test. But first things first, we need some wine. Take a bowl-shaped glass and fill it with about three ounces or 75 milliliters of wine. The headspace above the wine collects the aromas. In fact, if money is no object, you can have a special wine glass for each different type of wine. Take your fingers around the base of the glass and draw tight little circles on the table. Now we're swirling. Swirling helps release wine's aromas, which make it much easier to pick out individual smells. Now, close your eyes and take a slow, deliberate sniff. With your eyes closed, you'll pay closer attention to what you're smelling and let go of the idea that it's just wine. What do you smell? Chocolate-covered cherries, dried oregano, roses, melted butter. These are all common wine aromas. So where do they come from? When Pinot Noir is just a bunch of grapes, it doesn't have those aromas of strawberry, rose hip, and allspice. The aromas come from the process of fermenting and aging Pinot Noir into wine. It unlocks several chemical compound classes, including esters, isoprenoids, thiols, phenols, that all interact together to create thousands of possible aromas. What's surprising is that when you call chocolate in a glass of wine, you're not imagining things. Some wines share the exact same compounds found in ooey, gooey chocolate. I wish the science behind wine aromas was easy, but to sum up, it's not. For example, one compound class called thiols are responsible for everything from passion fruit aromas in Sauvignon Blanc, black currant notes in Cabernet Sauvignon, to the smell of cooked meat in Morved, and those whiffs of wet chalk in Chablis. But this is where something called impact compounds comes into play. They're specific aroma molecules strongly associated with certain wines or winemaking processes, and they're also called characteristic odorants, but I kind of prefer the ring of impact compounds. Have you ever smelled black pepper in a wine? I swear you're not making it up. Chances are you've actually getting a whiff of an aroma compound called rotundone. It's found in red wines like Syrah, Grenache, Zinfandel, Morvedra. And if you smell black pepper or white pepper or cocoa powder or even dried marjoram, these could mean you're actually smelling different levels of rotundone in the wine. But if you don't smell it, don't be too down on yourself. When rotundone was first discovered in the 1960s by the Australian Wine Research Institute, they also quickly found out that about one in five people can't detect it. People who try to steer clear of wines with vegetal aromas are missing out on a very distinct compound which smells strikingly like green bell pepper. The compound specifically is 3-isobutyl-2-methyloxypyrazine, or pyrazines for short, is common in red wines like Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Carmenere, Merlot, and yes, you can also find it in Sauvignon Blanc. 
Pyrazines are classic blind tasting tell for these Bordeaux varieties, which often have 10 times more of this compound present than other wine varieties. So if you smell green bell pepper or green peppercorn, or maybe fresh cut grass, it's very likely that you have one of these grape varieties in your hands. People talk a lot about the incredible flavor of aged wines, but what they could be yearning for is the delicious, sweet, roasty flavor of Sodalon. What does it smell like? Well, it's a lot like maple syrup or brown butter. The compound is one of the few that increases as wines age and oxidize. In fact, you'll get it right away on the nose of Madeira with its rich molasses-like aromatics. It's treasured in aged and oxidized wines like Sherry, so turn decade-old white Burgundy, or even in re fine red wines. If you age them year after year, they'll get these sweet roast tobacco or maple-like flavors. So if you smell that, it's likely your wine has some age, or oxidation. Okay, here's one for you. Have you ever smelled coconut in a red wine? That might be thanks to an aromatic compound called cis oak lactone. It's one of the key compounds extracted from oak barrels during aging. This compound is most commonly found in wines aged in American oak, like Rioja Reserva. And that's the interesting thing, is cis oak lactone is much more concentrated in American oak than it is in French oak, making it a blind tasting clue for wines that favor this type of barrel. Now here's a fun fact for you. The levels of cis oak lactone are influenced by how the barrels are toasted. Lightly toasted barrels bring out more of this compound while heavily toasting reduces it. So if your wine smells like coconut or a hint of dill, it might just be that you're sipping something aged in American oak. Here's a strange one for you. Have you ever noticed the smell of kerosene or diesel fuel in a white wine? Now, that unmistakable aroma comes from an aromatic compound called TDN, which develops as wines age. TDN is most famously associated with the grape Riesling, and as wines age, TDN levels increase, which gives wines this signature petrol-like aroma that Riesling enthusiasts adore. Now here's something fascinating. TDN is almost non-existent in fresh grapes, and it forms during the aging process as the grape skins break down over time. So if your glass of white wine smells like freshly paved road in the best way possible, it could be that you have a glass of properly aged Riesling on your hands. If your wine smells like melted butter or cream, you're experiencing diacetyl. It's a compound produced during malolactic fermentation, a process where bacteria convert sharp malic acid into softer tasting lactic acid. Diacetyl is most notable in white wines like Chardonnay, where it adds rich buttery aroma and a creamy texture to a white wine. But this compound is actually extremely common in red wines, where it adds a velvety mouth feel and a subtle creaminess. Of course, not all wines undergo malolactic fermentation, and this is why diacetyl is such a tell. If you're ever in a blind tasting with a white wine and you smell buttered popcorn, it's highly likely that you're smelling a glass of Chardonnay. Have you ever noticed delicate scent of violets or wildflowers in a red wine? That's thanks to beta ionin, a ketone responsible for floral aromas. It's most prominent in red wines like Pinot Noir, Gamay, Syrah, and Merlot, where it adds these elegant, almost haunting quality. This compound is so distinctive that it's often used as a marker in blind tasting. So if you smell violets, it's a big clue that you might have one of those four grape varieties in your glass. So let those impact compounds sink in, because now it's time for your special surprise. I was thinking about it and you know, it's been a while since we've gone on a field trip and I could have just grabbed a bottle from my collection and we could have tasted it in the studio, but I was like, no, Madeline, we've got to go on an adventure. So I'm heading out to a winery right now that specializes in wines that should express two or more of the impact compounds that we just discussed. So yeah, look at this place. Isn't this stunning? This is like peak 
wine country right now. Dang. This is a lot of vineyards. So I called them up on the phone and they said they had a couple of bottles of wine that we could try and we can see if we can identify those impact compounds. This winery looks fancy. You see this? They gave me a bottle of wine. Can you believe it? We show up with a couple of glasses and now we've got I can't believe this. I mean, this is the middle of winter where we are right now. And it's a perfect 65 degrees. Uh, where were we? Impact compounds. Let's, let's do this. All right. Give it a quick squirrel, swirl to release those aromas like we were talking about earlier. Looks pretty good, right? Looks darn good. All right, okay. This has totally got some stuff. We got a lot of fruits, but let's dig past the fruits to those impact compounds that we're looking for. I get this subtle note of green peppercorn, all right? There's also these notes, I would describe them like vanilla, maybe even coconut. And if you really dig your nose in the glass, actually, secret, if you're looking for floral aromas, kind of go on this top side of the glass. And I get this, just the slightest whiff of like wild irises. Let's give it a taste. So what aromatic compounds does this wine have that are really showing themselves and maybe telling us what's in the bag? All right, the big reveal. What do we have in the bag? It's a silver label. What do you think it is? Hold on. There's the label. There it is. There it is. Oh, that's the bag. <laughs> Whatever, guys, we're at Silver Oak in Healdsburg. But come on, let's go see. Let's go see. They said they're gonna show me the oak barrels and they're American oak, so I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. You guys can't smell this, but it smells crazy in here. It smells like vanilla and dill and coconut. And you know what that means? We've got sis oak lactone. See this barrel here says so 60 minutes. So when I, remember I was talking about toasting? This is how long the barrel sits over the toasting flame to get the medium toast level that it has. And that's what's gonna affect the amount of sisoglactone that we have in these barrels. And another cool thing they told me was that, you know, American oak is typically used in the bourbon industry and it's very popular for whiskey and that kind of a thing. And not very common with wine. And these oak barrels right here, um, they'd been working with this cooperage in Missouri for many years, and then they ended up buying them. So Silver Oak is one of the only wineries that I know of with their own cooperage in Missouri. They're the only ones, actually, with the cooperage in Missouri. So uh, 
If you got that, I really hope you did. I tried to give you a lot of clues. I'm super proud of you. All right, how'd you do? Did you guess the cisoplactum? Well, there were two other impact compounds that I mentioned when I tasted this wine. And one was our pyrazines, or our 3 isobutyl 2 methoxypyrazine, And that came out in the form of green peppercorn in this particular wine. And then I thought there was one, just the faintest hint of violet. Actually, I called that wild iris. That floral aroma, now this wine is mostly Cabernet Sauvignon, which doesn't have a lot of violet notes, but it has just a teeny bit of Merlot and a teeny bit of Petit Verdot. And if you've ever tasted Petit Verdot as a single variety of wine, you've probably been blown away by the aromatics of violet. And that is coming from Beta Ionin. Pretty cool, huh? Wine is science. Anyway, if you enjoyed what we did today, be sure to check out everything that we have at winefolly.com. There's memberships and more. And until next time, happy tasting. Peace out.